Hello and welcome to our second training, the Trainers Virtual Workshop. These workshops for CFRC volunteers are meant to provide you with some guidelines to help you train new recruits when they visit you during live broadcasts or in the pre-recording studios. CFRC staff have developed new checklists that we will make available online via email to you and in binders in each studio. These new checklists contain various tasks you can teach to a new recruit. New recruits will also have this checklist. After each session, they can review what they have learned by checking in the boxes, and staff will be better able to assess what skills need to be taught after each shadow session with our volunteers. In this session, we'll cover your role as a CFRC trainer. With new recruits signed up to start training in the coming weeks, we want to ensure everyone has an opportunity to meet current volunteers and learn from them. We also want to ensure that our current volunteers are prepared to teach new recruits the skills they need to do broadcast radio and that this teaching is consistent. Again, our checklists allow for us to also track what skills have been learned and what new skills new recruits have yet to learn, so by the time they reach the stage where they will submit a demo for their show, they understand all the necessary skills needed in the live and pre-recording studios. The the checklists are also useful for our current volunteers. Please use them to determine if there are skills that you do not know and alert staff so that we may also teach you. It is especially important to keep up with your own learning as we onboard new equipment and software that is critical for broadcast operations. In this session today, we'll cover how to train new recruits in the CR1 and CR3 recording studios. During the training process, new recruits visit the station to do an in-person orientation and to get a tour of the music library, our studios, and a brief introduction to all things CFRC. After orientation, we pair new recruits up with live broadcasters usually three to four times. Once the recruit has visited a live show at least twice, we can then start training them in recording skills in CR1 and CR3. When you're paired with a new recruit for recording studio training, we will ensure you have the checklist of skills to teach. Given time constraints and that we want to ensure you are able to produce your show in a timely manner, keep in mind that you do not need to cover every single item in one session. Further, after volunteers have done a couple of show shadow sessions with you, they will also be able to perform some of the skills on their own to help you produce your pre-recorded show. This is a great opportunity to correct mistakes while building their confidence. And when the recruit has demonstrated they understand a particular skill you have taught them, you can then move on to the next skill to teach. Importantly, please ensure that in your teaching you verbally explain and physically demonstrate how to use each piece of equipment and software that you use in the production of your show. In the past, volunteers have explained how something works but may not have shown a new recruit how to do it, or they've shown new recruits how to do something but did not explain its importance or utility. These connections must be made so new recruits can learn effectively and efficiently. It also helps new recruits who learn and retain knowledge in different ways. Critically, always ensure you allow the opportunity for the new recruit to touch and use the equipment and software if they are willing. Some people are a bit nervous at first and that's okay, but ultimately we want you to explain and to demonstrate and we want the new recruit to replicate and repeat what you have taught. Also keep in mind that the following instructions are meant as guidelines for things that you can teach as you record your program. Feel free to record your show in your usual manner, but be sure to explain what you are doing carefully. Show the trainee all of the equipment and software that you are using and explain their functions and processes as you go along to the best of your ability. Use the checklist to track what you were able to teach in your session. In this segment, we'll discuss skills you will need to explain and demonstrate to the new CFRC recruits related to how you prepare for a recording session to produce your radio show in advance of its deployment date. When you are paired with a new recruit, we will ask them to arrive 15 to 20 minutes prior to airtime to meet you at the station. And once you've introduced yourself and placed your belongings in the recording studio, take the recruit into the physical music library and show them how to find CDs and vinyl albums that you will use in your program. Please plan ahead so you know what music you want to select from the physical music library prior to your arrival at the station. While in the music library, also show the new recruit where the new music is located at the back door of CR2. And after spending a few minutes in the physical music library, go back to the recording studio you have booked. There, you can tell the recruit how you prepare your mosaics. For best broadcast quality, scripts are essential, and if you are using a script, please show it to the recruit. If you prefer to vamp, show them your notes. Discuss your research process as well and tell them how you find information about the topics you cover in your mosaics. 
This is a good opportunity to show the new Recruit the CFRC news page and Environment Canada weather site, as this is also useful information for your listeners that also fills mosaic time. After you have discussed your preparation process, show the recruit how you set up for your recording session, including organizing your physical music selections, loading music selections from your cloud service, thumb drive, laptop, or even the digital music library, collecting PSAs and promos that you will play during your show as well. During the preparation process, be sure to also open your .log account on the computer so it is also ready to go. And as mentioned, do be sure to also spend a few minutes demonstrating how to access and find music in the digital music library to the new recruit before you begin your recording. This is important as about 95% of our releases sent to CFRC now arrive digitally as this is a cheaper mode of delivery for independent artists. And we also want to ensure that the new recruits know how to access the new music that arrives at the station. In this section, we'll discuss orientation to CR1 and CR3. Regardless of the studio you use for recording, be sure to orient the new recruit to the very basics as soon as you enter the space. Show them how to use your pass card to enter the room. Then direct them to the light switch and dimmer switches for the overhead lighting. In CR1, show the trainee the on-off switch on the top left corner of the rack that powers the soundboard, and be sure to switch it on and off to demonstrate its function. If you are in CR3, show the trainee the on-off switch on the wall behind the rack that powers the soundboard and demonstrate its function by also switching it on and off. When you sit down at the console, remind the trainee it is always a good idea to restart the computer before use and then restart it. Note that if computers are left on too long, especially with programs running, running speed can be slow when you are using it, and this can impact your recording quality. And it's a good opportunity to remind the trainee to shut down all programs after the completion of their production. While the computer is rebooting, use the time to orient the recruit to the recording studio soundboard, each fader channel, and what equipment each channel operates. Show them how to turn the channel on and off and adjust levels, how to use the meter for each channel in use, and assess appropriate levels. And be sure to also show them the control knobs for volume, the cue toggle, the volume controls for headphones, and the overhead main speakers in the studio. In this section, we'll chat about demonstrating proper microphone use and voice technique. Show the trainee the fader toggles for each host and guest microphone and demonstrate placement of the fader at the arrow level on the board. Have the trainee put their headphones on while you do the same and then switch on both microphones. As you place your hand with your thumb and pinky finger extended between your mouth and the microphone, explain to the volunteer that this is the ideal speaking distance from the mic to ensure it doesn't pop or sound like a tunnel if you are too close or too far away. Remind them to speak naturally and that they should speak directly into the microphone. Then engage the volunteer in conversation while asking them to pay attention to their voice levels on the meter. Ask them to use the faders to adjust the levels so they can get a sense of the difference when the fader is down too low or too high. Don't forget to encourage other good practices like reminding the trainee to speak and breathe normally, to avoid chewing gum, handling noisy objects, and avoid placing the microphones too close together. At this point, you can open Reaper or your preferred DAW like Audacity or Sound Studio, demonstrate how to open a new project in a track, then show the trainee how to arm the track for recording. Once the track is armed, begin recording a sentence or two and stop recording while explaining what you were doing to the trainee. Then show the trainee how to play back the short statement you just recorded. After that, you can arm the track and begin recording a second time, maybe this time making some random noises like a cough or turning your head away from the microphone while speaking or shaking keys. After that, stop recording and listen again to what you have just recorded. Identify on the software where you can see the dips and peaks in the levels with random noise or your head turning away from the microphone. You can then also show the trainee how to edit this random noise out made on the voice track. After a brief demo of the voice track recording and some minor editing, perform another sound check and then start recording your own show using your script and prepared music. In this section, we'll chat about showing new trainees how to record from various devices in CR1 and CR3. 
For the turntables, if you are using them in your pre-recorded program, show the trainee the location of the power knob on the turntables, how to place a record on the turntable carefully, and how to choose a track by carefully setting the stylus on the record. Then show the trainee how to turn the channel on for the soundboard and how to engage the turntable. Arm your track in your preferred recording software and show the volunteer how to click record and begin recording from the album. Don't forget to stop recording mid-song to do some playback and verify that the recording is being done correctly and then start it again. Explain to the trainee each step in your process of recording from vinyl to the computer for inclusion in your radio show as you engage each step. For the CD players, if you are using them in your pre-recorded program, show the trainee the location of each CD player, their channels on the soundboard, and the CD player's various functions including power, eject, the track selector, the single continuous play button, and the mode and source buttons. Select the tracks you wish to pre-record, arm your track in your preferred software, and begin recording. Show the trainee all of the buttons and explain each step as you go through them. If the volunteer is comfortable, please allow them to find your preferred track on the CD player and record it for you as you provide instruction. For digital sources, including music you've stored in your cloud, music you bring on your laptop, or music you bring on a memory stick, be sure to walk the trainee through your process of importing the music, dragging and dropping that music into your recording software, or recording directly from the source. And while adding your recorded tracks, be sure to demonstrate your full process for mixing your voice and music tracks, how you fade in and fade out with your software, and of course, how you save your projects and render them into the required MP3s. And finally, don't forget to demonstrate how to use the network to drag and drop your completed recording through the network from your recording studio computer to your pre-record folder located on PC1 in the broadcast studio. After showing the trainee the ropes with equipment and recording software usage, be sure to also run through how to use .log. While CFRC will onboard a new logging system with our new website in 2023, .log will still be in use and phased out gradually. We will provide updated instructions for the new system on the volunteer resources page of the new website and hard copies in the studios when the time comes. Regardless of the system, it's the data that is most critical and you should remind the trainee that they must do their logs every single program as required by both SOCAN and the CRTC. Open your dot .log, log in, and show them how to find your program on the menu and enter the date and the time of broadcast. Show the trainee how you mark the time for each spoken word segment, station ID, PSA, promo, and ad while listing every song by artist and title. Show the volunteer how to select the category for their chosen song and how to select the CanCon, new, instrumental, and hit columns. After saving, also point to the percentage counter for your own program and remind them that they must meet the minimum standard of new and Canadian music depending on their program format, and they may never exceed 10% of their selections for hits. Don't forget to remind the trainee to do their logs within seven days of programming, and it's best to do them while actually recording so it's done, out of the way, and accurate. Be sure also to remind the trainee that they can also retrieve the archive of their show from the website and listen to it afterwards to ensure the timing is correct and all songs and segments are accounted for in the log sheet. Finally, while you are pre-recording, this is an excellent opportunity for the trainee to do your log for you and get this practice while you correct any entry errors. Feel free to reach out to staff with any other techniques we can and should teach and learn in the recording studios, and don't forget to remind the trainee to reach out to staff with any questions they may have. And also don't forget that you do not need to cover all learning in one session, as the new trainee will have several opportunities to learn in the recording studio before they begin recording their demo. The important part is to demonstrate and to explain patiently what you are doing and to allow opportunities for the trainee to do some of the tasks you are teaching them while you are there with them to guide and correct if necessary. Thank you so very much for your dedication to helping new trainees learn the ropes so they too can connect to and build our community through our airwaves.